channel. Today we're going to look at another spectroscopy method that can be used to determine the structure of a molecule. Today's video is going to focus on nuclear magnetic resonance or NMR spectroscopy. NMR is a spectroscopy that uses radio waves and electromagnets to produce information about the connectivity of atoms in a molecule. It relies on the fact that some nuclei, for example hydrogen and carbon-13 atoms, have spin. NMR takes advantage of this. When there is no magnetic field, the spin of the nuclei is random, as can be seen in this picture here. However, if you were to place this into a magnetic field, the nuclei will align themselves in, uh, in alignment with the magnetic field. There is then an energy difference between being aligned with the magnetic field and being aligned against the magnetic field. And that energy difference is equal to that of the energy of radio waves. If radio waves are applied to the molecule, this can then flip the nuclei, which will then relax back to their ground state and will release energy in the process, which can be detected. The energy is dependent on the environment of the protons, which is what we're going to be looking at today. So usually they would all be the same energy, but if you change the environment that they're in by connecting them to other atoms, then the energy that they release will be slightly different and this can be detected. The scale that we use for nuclear magnetic resonance is chemical shift, which is represented by a delta and is measured in parts per million. It is measured as a shift from the standard tetramethylsilane, which um, is given the value zero. Solvents that are used for NMR must not contain any hydrogen and therefore are usually deuterated. A small amount of hydrogen is left in to allow us to calibrate the machine so that you can know that you're definitely getting the correct chemical shifts. Let's have a look at proton environments. Here's a molecule of ethanol and we're going to have a look at how many different proton environments are present here. So if we start at the left hand side, we have three hydrogen atoms all attached to this carbon here. These hydrogens are all identical. The ones next door are slightly different because of what they're attached to on either side and then this one here is different again. So the ethanol molecule has three proton environments. Pause the video now and try and work out how many proton environments you'll find in each of these molecules. Let's start by drawing each molecule and then go back and have a look at the proton environments. So in butanol, we'll have one proton environment for the CH3s here. We'll have another proton environment for these CH2s. Another one for these CH2s because they're joined to this carbon which is slightly different. Another one here for these CH2s. And then finally another one for the OH hydrogen. Having a look at butanoic acid, we'll have one for the CH3s. We'll have one for these CH2s attached to the CH3 group. We'll have one for the CH2s attached to the carboxyl group. And then finally one for the OH group. So looking at ethoxypropanoate, we've got our CH3 here. Then a CH2. This CH2 is different because it's not identical in um, connectivity to this one. And then finally our CH3 here, which is again different to this one because it is not in an identical environment. Now having a look at methoxypentane. We've got our CH3 here attached to an oxygen, so that means that this CH3 over here is not identical. We've then got a CH2 attached to this oxygen, which means that this CH2 here is also different. That CH2 is in a different environment to this one, and this one here is in, is in another environment still. So here we would end up with one, two, three, four, five, six different environments. So drawing out the low resolution spectra for ethanol, if we go back and highlight our different uh, uh, proton groups that we have.
So if we take each of these peaks in turn, so looking here at your OH peak, if you have a look in the databook on page 16, then you'll find that this will lie somewhere between 1 and 5 on the NMR spectrum. So we're going to put it around about 5, and that will be of a height for 1 hydrogen. If we have a look at the next one, so for the CH2, now that's a CH2 which is attached to an O, so that's the fourth row down in the table, and that comes between 3.5 and 3.9, so very specific, and that will be of double the height for two hydrogens. And then finally, our CH3, which is just attached to a, a carbon, and that's going to come between 0 0.9 and 1.5, so round about here, and that's going to be of height 3. Pause the video now and try and draw low resolution NMR for butanol and butanoic acid. So for butanol, we found that we had five different hydrogen environments. So if we sketch butanol at the side and highlight those environments, so we have a CH3 group, we have three different CH2 groups, and then finally our OH group over at the end. So if we start over at the OH group, and we have a look on page 16, so we have this is an ROH, so this is going to lie somewhere between 1 and 5. So we're going to put it right in the middle here for 5, and it's going to be of a height for 1. We're then going to have a look at our next one. So that's CH2, and it's attached to this OH. So this is the fourth line in the table, and it's between 3.5 and 3.9. So if we put it here, and that's double the height because it's got two hydrogens. We're then looking at this CH2 here. So this CH2 group is attached to a carbon on either side and it's going to be between 1.5 and 0 0.9. So if we put that around about here, I haven't drawn a scale onto this, and that's also going to be worth two. And right beside it, but possibly slightly different, is the other CH2. So there may be one peak that is the height of four, but we're going to draw them as two separate ones just now. And then finally CH3 which is another environment and is in around about the same region and this time it's worth three so we're going to have it as slightly taller. Now having a look at butanoic acid. So if we sketch out what we had for butanoic acid. So here we have our CH3, then a CH2, another CH2, and a CH double bond OOH. So we'll put in our axes down here at the bottom and we're going to start from the right hand side again. So looking at the carboxyl group there. So the carboxyl you will find is about two thirds of the way down the table and is between 10 and 11. So right up at this end here, and is worth one hydrogen. So this is a CH2 and this one is the third one down in the table. So that lies between two and 2.7. So round about here and it's gonna be twice the height because it's got two hydrogens there. Next door to it, we have another MCH2, but this one is just in the carbon chain and it's gonna be between 0 0.9 and 1.5. And then our final one is our CH3, which is in a similar region and is worth three hydrogens. You would be expected to be able to draw low resolution NMR. However, you have to be able to work out high resolution and what it is showing you. So for high resolution, we have the N plus one rule for each environment. So again, I'm going to highlight the different environments that we have in the ethanol molecule here and we'll work out how many peaks would be seen within the high resolution NMR for these. So if we have a look at um, CH3 here, and we have the N plus one, so that is the number of hydrogens attached to the carbon on the next door carbon. So we've got our yellow one here, and next door we've got two hydrogens, so for this one we'll have two plus one, we would experience three peaks. Now what this is because these hydrogens here can couple with these ones. So each of them would start off with their line and then they would couple once with one of the hydrogens 
on the next door one and then they would couple again with the other hydrogen on that carbon. So you would end up with um, three peaks and they will be in the form of a height of one, a height of two, a height of one. The next one here, we're looking at the carbon next door. So we've got three hydrogens on that one. So we're gonna have three plus one. So you're gonna get four peaks in that one. So we start off with one peak, it couples once, it couples twice, and then it couples a third time. And you can see that this time we would end up with a peak of height 1, 3, 3 and 1. And then our final one, we have our hydrogen um, here, but it's actually too far so we would just end up with one um, peak for that one. Pause the video now and try and predict the number of lines for the highlighted peak in a high resolution NMR for each of these molecules. So for the OH group here, we would just see one peak. For this hydrogen here, we have three on this one and two here. So that's going to be five plus one is six. Here we've got three on this one here and these are too far away. So we'll have three plus one is four. And then finally we have the CH3 ones here. We've got two on this carbon here. So we'll have two plus one is three. Thanks for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.